What's up, everybody? It is a week for 120, and the reason why that is is because I just received the Negative Supply 120 scan holder. I have been waiting for this for, it seems like maybe over a year. Uh, it seems like at least a year and a half or so. Um, basically, as soon as they sent me the 35 millimeter carrier that they had been working on, I was like, damn, I, I cannot wait to get a 120 version of this. And it is here. And I am going to test it, and I am going to show you what it can do. In my experience with the reproduction camera that I use and some of the other negative supply uh, tools that I use, I already know that I can create files that rival the best and most expensive scanners out there. So I'm going to show you how I do it with the negative supply 120 scanner. It finally arrived. I am so stoked. And man, it is beautiful. Okay, let's just do a quick unboxing. I'll show you what comes with the carrier and my overall impressions of how to use it and how well it works. When you open up the box, you have these two baggies. One contains the 120 carrier itself and the other contains a series of masks. The masks are just the major film formats, 6x6, 6x9, 6x5, 6x7. It covers basically everything you would, you would need. This is the carrier itself. Of course, it is incredibly well made, just like the Mark I carrier. I'm really impressed with the design, and it's very easy to swap a mask in and out, as you can see me doing here. Um, you just open the swing arm, put the mask in, and then put it back down. When you insert your film, you do it just like the Mark I. Find the slot on the side opposite the knob and move it across the mask with the swing arm up. It doesn't actually contact the mask, so there's no risk of scratching. You'll feel it engage with the knob as it enters, and then you can move the film uh, back and forth through the transport mechanism. According to the instructions, when transporting the film through the scanner, you should have the swing arm up until you find a frame that you wish to scan. In my experience, you can do it with the swing arm down the whole time, but I guess there probably is an added risk of scratching. I have not encountered a scratch yet, but it could happen. Uh, one thing that Im impresses me a lot about this scanner is that even the end frames on a strip like this are held completely flat. Uh, that's critical for making high-end scans. You wouldn't want your film to curl, and those are situations in which it would. The best thing I can say about the 120 carrier is simply that it does what it says it's going to do on the tin. It makes it easy to scan an entire roll in minutes. It flattens your film. You can do strips. The quality level, depending on the rig you're using, is as high as the highest end scanners out there. In terms of ultra high resolution imaging and film capture, there's nothing else like it. It's a complete game changer. So as you may have seen in the video, I was scanning Provia 100F. Uh, I shot those in my High 6 Mod 2. I think I used my 80 millimeter and my 50 millimeter lens. Um, and I scanned them in the same way that I normally would using my reproduction camera in pixel shift mode. I'm gonna go over pixel shift again. Uh, it's an incredibly impressive piece of technology for scanning. I know that you can do it for other purposes, but I think that it's uniquely well suited to scanning because what it does is it creates a capture at red, green, blue, and then another series of captures to increase the resolution uh, over what your sensor is natively capable of. There's no better situation than a camera scan, in my opinion, for this technology because the film is not moving and the high fidelity that you get from all of those captures really enhances the film itself. So these six by six frames were scanned to roughly 100 megapixels. Um, we'll go over in Lightroom now and I'll show you what kind of quality uh, we got from the 120 carrier. In Lightroom, let's take a look at the first image. This is a good option because it is basically sharp throughout the frame and I probably shot this at F4.0 so it shows a lot of detail. Um, I, I also like this image. It's kind of haunting and really simple in a minimalistic way. Um, so let's take a look at the detail that we're getting on this table. Pretty much sharp, uh, as sharp as it gets um, in terms of a scan. Now I did do some sharpening here. All film scans should be sharpened to some extent. And when you are camera scanning, the scan technology obviously doesn't do any but you can see just nothing but detail here. I mean, this is 100%. We are pixel peeping right now, and uh, it basically ends up being grain peeping. You can just kind of see the light sprinkling of uh, Provia grain in the wall textures here. It's, it's very impressive. Um, I'm not getting any issues with the flatness at the edges. You know, this is um, 
this is basically as good as a scan of this image is going to get. Now, I wish that I had a drum scanner or a flex type to compare it with, but uh, I, if they were better, I don't know how they would be better. This is the other image that I'm excited about. Number one, because it was a very dense chrome. Um, this area of the grass was pretty much blocked up and then you had a lot of highlight um, kind of not quite blowing out, but uh, just off white up here. And then I really like these, um, these, these light splattered textures that you have here. So I did a little bit of work on here. I did some recovery on the, on the lower end and I um, did of course my normal sharpening and, e and I even applied some clarity. But let's look at the level of detail that we're getting in this scan. Uh, you can see basically the detail is as good as it gets. I mean, you're really seeing the texture in the wood here. And I mean, this is a very small part of the original. Um, you can see the shadow information start to reveal itself. Uh, you're holding all of the uh, tones in terms of these highlight areas. It's, it's really great. I mean, this is not my sharpest capture. I think I probably shot it in relative low light and I was handheld. But in terms of how I'm reproducing it here, it's about as good as it gets. And I, I just sort of like this image. So I'm, I'm stoked to be able to capture it. I moved my camera scanner a little closer. So you'll see up here that it's about 122 megapixels. Uh, let's hop over to Photoshop and see how that would print. So if we go into Photoshop and then we open up the uh, image size dialog. You can see at 240 PPI, uh, you will get a 46 inch print. Now that is pretty huge. If you ask me, that is bigger than most people are likely to make of any of their photographs. If you go to 300, you get a 36 inch print. And if you go to 360, which is the native PPI of large format Epson printers, you get a 30 by 30. Now I can only make a 24 by 24. So when I, if I was to do that, I would downsample this image uh, to 24 by 24 at 360, and that would further give me the most quality um, possible in a scan like this. Um, so uh, I'll just give you my final thoughts now on what I think of the Negative Supply 120 carrier. Okay, as you can see, I'm pretty impressed with the Negative Supply holder. It, Like I said when I was demonstrating it, it does what it says it's going to do on the 10. It keeps your film flat. It makes it easy to transport the film through a strip or through a roll you can be incredibly efficient. I mean, to give you an example, I used to scan with a Nikon CoolScan 9000, very high-end scanner from Nikon, it made incredible uh, 120 scans. If I was to set up a six by six frame and tell it to scan that image at 4,000 PPI, which was its maximum, uh, it would take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes for the single frame to be completed. Now with a negative supply carrier and my camera scanning rig, I can exceed that level of quality in just a few seconds and I can do an entire roll. I, I mean, I could do three or four rolls in the time that it would take the CoolScan 9000 to do a single frame. Um, the, the speed is really and truly game changing. I cannot stress that enough. If you're looking to maximize your efficiency, uh, maximize your scan quality, you really don't have to look any farther than the carriers from Negative Supply. They just are, you know, some people say that they're a little expensive. Yeah, they're a little bit expensive, but guess what? They're also really, really nice. Uh, so if you want a high-end piece of scanning equipment that is not going to break down on you, that's going to do what it says it's going to do without any uh, issues in terms of film flatness or scratching your film or just overall cheapo parts breaking, things like that, you get neg negative supply because it's the best. Um, you know, I tend to, in my life, say that I'm too poor to buy cheap. <laughs> I think that, that that is a rule that I can apply to photographic equipment and specifically negative supply tools. So I'm really excited about what they're doing. They have some new stuff coming. A little bird told me that they're trying to make a mask that would allow full burner scanning. Um, I know that their light panels are the next step. They are gonna be a bigger game changer, I think, than people realize because the current light panels are pretty good and they do a nice job in terms of their color rendition, but they're a little dim. So it makes it harder to get uh, quick captures, which will maximize, you know, sharpness in terms, if you don't have the most stable rig. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get scanning with this. I'm gonna complete some projects that I've been wanting to do forever and just been waiting for the negative supply holder to do so. Okay, so again, I am Mark from Northeast Photographic. I run a tiny little film lab here in Maine and uh, we've done nothing but grow this summer, even with COVID going on. If you like our services or if you have not tried our services, please try us out or tell your friends about us or 
you know, uh, take a look at our website and read about what we do. Um, we're a little bit different from other labs. Uh, we're not always as fast, but we offer services in a little bit of a different way, and we're always looking to push the envelope when it comes to scan quality technology and, uh, and keeping prices low uh, so that you guys can shoot more film and film can be a sustainable and realistic choice for the people that really want to shoot film and are not too into the digital thing like myself. Um, it is incredibly hot in my office right now. I am going to go swimming because uh, it is summer in Maine. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to do my next video. Bye-bye guys.